Hey everybody, it's Mike Mike Fab. I once again want to thank you for dropping in, checking out the video. Uh, we're moving on. We're doing aluminum, aluminium welding, AC welding on uh, today's video uh, in our continuation of our series of how to begin, uh, how to set up and begin welding, uh, TIG welding for the beginner. Begin for the beginner. Yeah, something like that anyway. And we're going to call this uh, drills three and four because we already got one and two in the bag and that's uh, welding stills. So. Um, I've already, this is take number two on this video, and uh, I, I basically did the first one. I was just spewing all the information I know about aluminum welding and, and all the nuances of it in fine detail. And my wife said, you're stupid. No one's going to sit there for 20 minutes and listen to you speak. So she said, you got to bottom line it and break it down into usable pieces. And uh, she's a bright girl. So I'm going to listen to her. And we're, and we'll try to get this, just the information you need to know. There's lots, there's so much I could go on, not just for 20 minutes, but for hours on, on boiling aluminum. It's, so what are we gonna do today? Well, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in drill number one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a piece of metal and we're just gonna make dots, okay? And every time we make a line of dots, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the amperage and we're gonna fill the metal. So we're gonna know like, hey, the metal's like crazy hot, it's not so hot, whatever it is. Be careful when you're doing this because aluminum gets really hot really fast uh, and you don't wanna burn yourself. You just need to, welders, welders touch things like this. And then, oh, okay, maybe, maybe, oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. And you'll, you'll learn that. You'll burn the bejesus out of yourself uh, quite a few times, especially after running like a particularly really good bead and you wanna just grab it and look at it and you're gonna burn the, you're gonna burn the, the you're gonna burn yourself, man. <laughs> so do the first one at like 150 amps. We're gonna use, uh, if you can, get your hands on 1 8th, uh, 50, 52 is what I like to use. You can usually buy a four by eight sheet of this stuff for around, so it was going for 100 bucks uh, pre-tariff. So I don't know what it's going for now, but uh, basically the same size of a sheet of plywood is going to give you tons of practice on. Cool thing about aluminum is you can cut it with a circular saw. So what I use, pause video, is this fancy little Milwaukee uh, M, was this the M12? Uh, and, and I use this framing blade. This is the one that came with it. So it's, it's carbide tipped, but it's nothing fancy. I mean, you're supposed to use like a high carbon tipped, you know, which they don't really sell for these little guys. Now I have cut, uh, a half, no, an inch. I've cut an inch of aluminum because I usually buy it, you know, four or six sheets at a time and I have to cut them up into usable pieces. So on the bed of my truck, I'll just take this, fence it and just run it. And you know, you don't want to push it. Just let it, let it do its cut. Let it walk itself through. It makes a terrible mess. It spews little aluminum uh, snowflakes, if you will, everywhere. Uh, but it gets it done. Don't do a table saw. A table saw will kill you. This is probably pretty dangerous too, but I've had really good luck with using that. So you can cut up lots of coupons uh, for welding. I'd say maybe cut yourself a foot by foot uh, sheet to do this drill on, uh, or eight eight inches, eight inches to a foot somewhere in there, and uh, and that'll be great. So and then after you get done doing the dots, every one of these we're going to change. You know, we'll say 110, 170, uh, 120. and just fill because what that's going to do is it's going to make your, your your head and your foot kind of join with your eyes in controlling the the arc and controlling the heat input and making that puddle size. Be careful, be, be, be sure you're able to see. I've talked about using maybe glasses, you know, adjust your helmet until you can get a good clear view. If you got a piece of crap helmet, uh, invest money in, in a decent helmet that has a good view. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna make lines, all right? And it's gonna be the same thing. We're not adding filler on any of these guys. We're just adjusting the amps and we're making lines. And see what happens when you move faster or you move slower. Uh, maybe try the same amps and move faster on one. Try to maybe double your speed and watch what happens to the width of the bead. Uh, slow down and see what happens. Keep touching the metal. At a certain point, a lot of times, well, what I've noticed with aluminum is it'll just, at a certain point, it'll just heat soak. And that's when you gotta, you gotta stop put a little fan on it for a minute or two and it'll kind of it'll knock the stink off of it, if, if you will. And then you can get back to welding. Uh, so that's the, that's, that's the first drill. And then the second drill is the same thing, right? Except we're gonna be doing it with filler. So it's the same thing as drill number two with the steel is we're just gonna be writing beads, okay? 
So you just keep adjusting, adjusting your amps and roll with it. In your video, you'll see me uh, just kind of roll through. Notice my speeds. Uh, I can get the same width, the same bead width as, as a low amp by uh, using a, a higher amp and moving faster and just dabbing a little faster because you're moving faster. And I can also get tighter ripples in my uh, beads by dabbing, dabbing less filler, but doing it more often like pop, 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 and it'll make tight little ripples or I can kind of space them apart. What I generally do is like we said before, is I make that, that, make that puddle, try to dip in the middle and move to the end of it and then dip in the middle and then try to move to the end of it dip in that middle, try to move to the end of it, dip in the middle, try to move to the end of it. And I, I like this, this works really good, especially for aluminum. Aluminum is really, uh, everything you do is gonna be crazy pronounced. Uh, so those beads are gonna be pronounced as well. Really pay attention to the heat. What happens with aluminum, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful metal, it's a, it's a mystery metal, it's fabulous. So let's say I take an inch block, like my blocks that I use for fixturing my collectors on, and they're usually about a couple inches thick or something. What I can do is I can take my uh, take a thing of map gas and hit it on the corner, and when it gets hot, within a second, the whole block is going to be crazy hot. It, it, it's just it just transfers heat. Bam! Now if I took that same size block with steel and put it on that corner, and you know it and it's like maybe when we'll get this up to 500 you know 600 degrees and, and had a little thermal a little light and when it did that I reached over here and touched this side it's a good chance it's gonna be like stone cold with with still it just doesn't move heat and that's why aluminum is used for uh, you know heat exchanging type stuff and you guys know all of those applications so it, it's important to know that this is gonna be different than the steel with still it can kind of it's kind of a, it, it's, it's almost a constant. It's not quite a constant, but it's almost a constant. With aluminum, it changes. So when I start uh, on the first bead on a cold plate at 150, I bet I'll use all the pedal to start. And a lot of times too is, I've noticed that aluminum kind of likes to be welded warm. Like it doesn't like to be welded stone cold. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just creep in there and I'll just kind of half throttle it. And I won't even try to puddle it. I'll just kind of warm it up and you'll let the magic pixies dance all over that and then after maybe uh maybe like three or four seconds of kind of heating that spot up then i'll kind of walk the pedal down and i'll watch the puddle come up to me and you can you can see that you know it's not it's not any crazy sudden fast movements people always get in a rush with welding they think like oh my god there's a puddle i gotta 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 go and, and and that's that's a wrong mindset you need to just chill your ass out everything's perfectly under control you control that puddle with your foot you control how how well it's fed uh and how much metal it gets in that puddle with your filler rod and your travel so you're controlling it don't freak out and it's best to do this practice stuff because it gives you a chance to kind of get over that and get to the bare bones of this is the, how the mechanics of welding works so i've talked probably way too much i think i've given you guys kind of the nuggets i'll keep adding them in as we go along i don't want to like my wife said overwhelm you with just too much stuff i've probably talked way too long it doesn't have a timer up here tell me what it is but uh we're gonna go do this and i got great arc shots for this do this at home this is like one of those retro movies where Starts at the end and ends in the beginning. Because to be quite honest, I've already done all this, but I only got the arc shots in that. So I'm going to shoot the other shots so you guys can actually see the rest of it, not just arc shots, because that'd be kind of boring. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run a number five gas lens for, and this is like an old gas lens that I have. Don't look at me, look at this. Can you see this? So this is like an old gas lens that I have. And the problem with welding aluminum and gas, there's kind of two schools of thought. One is to use the standard cullet like this guy. And you see it's got just four holes on the side of it and a place for the tungsten obviously 
and the cups look like this. They're real small as opposed to this. But the idea is you don't need the gas cover, so you don't use a big gas lens for aluminum. And the other idea is that with aluminum, it kind of stuff has a tendency to come off aluminum and it gets just kind of crappy, I think is the best way to say it. And uh, one school of thought says just use a small gas lens. And the other school of thought says why even waste the money on gas lenses when it's gonna guck them up and just use the standard collet. I am of the standard collet camp myself, unless I'm in a rush and I already have a gas lens on there and I just wanna swap out real quick. Okay, so here's the setup. And you'll see how it's kinda of shiny and it's kinda of like ball, like a tiny ball on the end of that tungsten there. That's pretty normal for welding aluminum. So the settings are going to be kind of the same. I'm starting out with the same settings I always use for aluminum, and that's 150, 152 amps, 65% uh, AC balance, and the frequency, I'm going to set it at 60. It really, I, it really doesn't matter, you know, for this reel, what you do. And honestly, I don't really see much of a difference on the frequency. Uh, so whatevs and our gas flow is going to be set real low at like 13 CFH and that's it and then we'll just from there just adjust the amps up or down we'll run our drill and then for the second one where we're actually running beads this guy here is it focused we will use the number five colon which is what I did here I just picked out this little guy and that's what I'm trying to match in my head so I'm also getting the you know the concept of visualizing the size that it should be and then making that actually happen by controlling my foot pedal so this was at 152 amps and uh, you see it I might be a little bit smaller than the my reference here but not not too bad so now I'm gonna turn it down to 110 amps my first one, I used a lot of foot pedal. The ones after that, it really didn't take much foot pedal at all to get the size that I wanted. So we'll see what 110 does. Okay, now we'll do 170 and just see how the foot pedal feels. That took a lot of pedal to get those guys. Here we're just kind of lighting up, just taking our time. 
walking the pedal down and walking the pedal off. Step forward, same thing. Kind of walk the pedal down. You'll see it spool. Uh, you'll see it pull, puddle up, get shiny, and you just trail off. Same thing. Walk the pedal down. You can see the silver shiny puddle. And as we come off, you see it solidifies. Great. And that's all there is to it. So you see they're real porous, but the idea here is just to control the heat input and make them all the same size. And this was done at 150, this was done at 110, and this was done at 170. And what I noticed was to get them going, they all required a little more amps. Uh, you know, a little more foot pedal. And when I say amps, I mean you have to press the foot pedal down harder or for a longer period of time to get them going. I wasn't in a hurry. You didn't see me panic and rush at any point. Uh, and as I backed it off, if I saw these little pores start to pop up. I kind of got back into it just a little bit more and tried to clean some of the pores out. Uh, you know, this is what you see when you don't add filler in aluminum. Not saying you can't weld that way. Just saying this is what you're going to see when you're doing this drill. Don't freak out. 150 110 170 and as I went along I noticed like the first one took a little bit of input But after that all of them were relatively less input to make the same size as you went along So do this it teaches you to control the foot pedal It can teaches you how to conceptualize in your mind what the bead size should be and how to you know Make that come to fruition by using your eyes watching the puddle and uh, you know adjusting the pedal so that's a good drill. That's the first one you got to do. And now we're going to just make lines like like these guys over here. Then we'll see if I can make it over a mill. First line, we're going to do it 170 since the machine's already there. Here you can see the arc shot and you'll see how bright the arc actually looks and you can't really see the puddle underneath it in this picture. This isn't how I have my hood set up so my hood's a little bit darker than this and I don't see that arc plume that you see here in this picture. I just see the puddle so in the next video, the next uh, arc shot you'll see that a lot better. So this is a much better representation of what, I, what I'm actually seeing underneath my hood. Uh, the arc is much smaller than it was in the previous one, you might notice. And you can see it's a lot easier to see the shiny silver puddle underneath it. And that's how my hood is set up. It's just if I get this too dark so you can see what I see, you can't really see the filler. You can't see the, the cup. All you can see is the tungsten. So it's just playing with the camera. Um, I don't get these little Star Wars next generation force field things that you're seeing like every three seconds. I think that's just a function of the camera. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much what I'm seeing under the hood when I weld. So maybe mess around with your helmet and make sure you have a good clear view.
Okay, so here is our beads, and I just kind of had in my mind like what size I wanted, you know, and just tried to stay consistent with that. And I think we proved to be relatively consistent with the bead width. You know, that puddle width is it's important in controlling it. You'll see that first bead, how porous it is. And that was done at 170, but I wasn't using a whole lot of throttle. Uh, and the metal is kind of cool and then you'll see once it get hot that it wasn't quite as porous um, We did 170 and you see I kind of moved kind of slow there I was using the puddle I was kind of back stepping trying to get heat back into it And I was trying to if I saw uh, one of these pores open up when I was willing I just kind of roll back into it and try to try to cover it up. I didn't get all of them um, This one was done at a hundred just plain 100 and you saw how fast I went. I went about the same as the first one here but there was heat in the metal and then I turned it back up to 130 for the last one and you'll notice that I kind of went pretty quick on that last one and the idea was that instead of using the pedal to control the heat I used the movement so I just floored the pedal all the way down and then I just moved my hand faster to kind of get that same bead width all the way through the travel so uh you just keep on doing this try try adjusting your amps try adjusting your speed try you know maybe try 100 amps and, and move you know uh twice as fast as you normally would and see how that you know what the bead looks like move uh, slow um but you know be clear, this guy's gonna heat up and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you know uh let it cool down a little bit it's uh what's good to do is do two pieces and that way when one's cooling you can get the other one worked up and just drop it down usually if you got a semi clean cement floor that works great so on this guy we're going to run some beads so we're going to do the same thing we're going to start at 150 and then we're just going to adjust the uh adjust the um amps as we go along and i'm also going to adjust my travel speed and on the last one we'll, we'll just kind of change the bead profile by dipping real fast and we'll see how that looks but we're going to swap this out to uh, the regular standard Colt body. And what we're going to notice is nothing. <laughs> I take that back. I did have to bump it up a CFH. So I had to go from like 12 to 13 to get full coverage on the standard Colt body as opposed to the number five uh, gas lens. But that is negligible. And we're going to use... Uh, the same Blue Demon uh, 5356 330 second filler that I sell on my website. Good?
Okay, so I wasn't stopping to yap to you every single time I wrote down the uh, the amps that I ran these guys at. And you guys should have been able to see all that. So we started at 150. And I just took my time to warm up this plate because it was just stone cold. And uh, once I, once I kind of put some heat into it, I just kind of hovered around for maybe a couple seconds. And then I walked the pedal down until I got the bead profile I wanted. And then just moved out doing that, you know, aim the... the filler to the middle of the puddle, move the tungsten forward to the end of that puddle, aim the filler, you know, just that step move that I keep talking about to you guys. Then I went up to 170 and was able to get pretty much the same thing, required a lot less uh, pedal input because now not only were we hot, but now we got plenty of amps. I went to 110 and I was able to use a lot more throttle. I think I just put it down to the floor and was able to basically kind of do the same thing that I did before. With just you know controlling the how slow or fast I went and using the pedal and then I used a hundred and you see it's almost a little bit thinner it was just painfully slow waiting for the the, the, the bead to, the width to kind of grow out of the puddle to get it you know where I knew it needed to be then I went 140 amps and I just kind of hauled balls I just put the pedal all the way down and instead of uh, you know controlling it with the pedal I just went fast and just dab a little fast and you see that changes the bead profile of, of how it looks and lastly I went 140 uh, again I kind of used the pedal this time and didn't go quite as fast but I dipped like twice as fast you see how that puts those like many more ripples into the bead profile so I hope I didn't overload you guys it's a great drill like I said, to kind of tie everything together for you. And uh, I want you to just practice this at home. I know that you just like, just get on the freaking making stuff, Mike, right? Cause that's, that's kind of the best way, but uh, it's not necessarily the best way. That's kind of how I learned. And I, I did a lot of suffering for it. So when my wife wanted to learn and she came to me and said, hey, teach me how to TIG weld. I really sat down and kind of thought about it. Like how, how do I, if I was to do this again and needed to move from knowing nothing to the point where I am now, what would be the fastest way to get there? And I really spent some time dwelling on it. And this is one of those drills where I was like, this is, this is a, a just a game, you know, this is, this is something that's going to just pay so much reward for the time spent. I know it's tough sitting down and welding, but you're, you'll be thinking yourself if you do it. And if you don't do it, you're going to be wishing you had. So it is, it is whatever it is, right? Anyway, I appreciate you guys dropping by and checking out my videos. As always, I hit a thousand subscribers, and that's super special to me. And uh, I hope those are a thousand people that I helped out. And I, you guys are helping me out by going to my store and checking out my products and buying my fabrication products, my welding supplies. I got that TIG beginner package. It comes with pretty much everything you need, just right off the, the you know, no questions asked to get going and making nice looking welds the stuff you need to make nice looking welds minus the talent part that's on you so go check it out if you'd like to it's monkeyfabgarage.com and uh, i appreciate you guys stopping in and this is mike monkeyfab signing out